when you were doing your research for this story, what what really jumped out at you? What surprised you the most, Judy? Well, the producers and the director of the series uh, gave me a lot of research. And also there was a lot of information online already because there was a huge media uproar when this happened. Essentially, in 2013, there was already a lot of information about it. And what surprised me the most was the myriads of odd coincidences that could have explained how she disappeared and died. And you can kind of understand why there were so many conspiracies. There were weird connections to the movie Dark Water and that it kind of looked like the Dark Waters plot. Um, there was a little girl there who fell into a water tank and that's how she died. There was also a tuberculosis breakout among Skid Row at the time that Elisa was staying at the Cecil. And then oddly, the tuberculosis test that was used to assess whether or not somebody had been infected was coincidentally called Lamb Elisa. It was spelled exactly the same way as her name. And people thought that maybe she was a bioweapon and she was here to reduce the homeless population of Skid Row. Also, the last location that she was seen outside of the hotel was a bookstore, a very famous bookstore in Los Angeles called The Last Bookstore. Well, if you go to the website and you look at the registration code, there's a postal code. And when you put that postal code into Google, it pinpoints to the cemetery that Elisa's body is buried in. So you can see why there were so many conspiracy theories. Somebody was thinking, you know what? Maybe the investigation that the police are doing, they're not telling us something. And I think that was the most surprising part was that there was just so many pieces of coincidental information that didn't seem to make sense. Judy, there were so many pieces to this puzzle which made it fascinating and a huge part of, of the series are these so-called web sleuths. I mean, these people were obsessed, and we're talking about hundreds of people that would spend uh, days on end in front of their computers gathering all this information, all these coincidences and, and facts, things like that, that they all put together trying to, to create this air of a conspiracy going on in the case of the disappearance of Elisa Lamb. So, I know that you've looked at all the information, all the evidence, you're a for forensic psychologist. When you, when you first look at that famous elevator surveillance footage of Elisa acting clearly very strange, what did you think? Well, Dr. Orden, to your point, that elevator footage was the origin of these conspiracy theories. People uh, became famous on YouTube, starting channels, all trying to solve this mystery. And in the elevator footage, she was acting very oddly. She pressed a bunch of elevator buttons, then she stood there, then she kind of looked like she was hiding in a corner and peeking out of the elevator. Then she stepped out of the elevator and it looked like she was gesturing really oddly to maybe somebody off camera. So again, these conspiracy theories abound. But I knew, given the history of her bipolar disorder and the fact that she has had bipolar disorder with psychotic features in the past, as discussed by her family eventually, that she was most likely in a manic episode. And when somebody is in a manic episode, they could have all kinds of hallucinations hearing things that aren't there, seeing things that aren't there. They could have delusions, thinking that people are after them, that they're being chased. And also they have psychomotor agitation where they move their arms and hands and legs and body parts just in really odd motions that don't really seem to make sense. And so once I put that together and I looked at the elevator footage, I understood that most likely it was because she was having a manic episode and this was a mental health concern that unfortunately at the time was being under addressed. Yeah, it's so important to understand that you do, if you do have bipolar disease, you can manifest psychotic, delusional, paranoid behavior and it would seem that that's what was going on in the uh, elevator scene.